If at some point in your life you were a licensed driver, then you'll remember what it was like the first time you tried to drive. Yes, I do know that for many of you that may have been a while ago, but for everyone who learned to safely and effectively drive a car, we all had to start somewhere. When it comes to creating Excel dashboards, we all need to start somewhere as well. Like learning to drive, the best place is to start with some basics. In this case, that includes deciding on dashboards. What are dashboards? What is their purpose? And is it the tool to implement to meet our data needs? In other words, do we need to drive? If we say yes, then we proceed. Next, we need to know how to prepare the data. When we learned to drive, we didn't just get in and start driving, at least I hope not. We had to learn a few things about the rules of the road, as well as how the car operated before we could safely go any further. In Excel, everything goes back to the underlying source data. So we'll discuss some tips and tricks, as well as techniques, for ensuring the source data is configured and formatted so it's easy to use and update in our dashboard. Once we get the foundations out of the way, it's time to get to work. Even though we're working in Excel, there are some traditionally non-Excel types of things we need to do to prepare for a dashboard interface. We'll work through creating the elements and setting some of the basic worksheet formats to best accommodate the dashboard itself, including branding and navigation. Of course, the defining part of a dashboard are the visual components that summarize and communicate the underlying data. There are many variations that offer engaging, easy to understand displays, and we'll discuss, create, and configure several different types of visualizations that can be used to highlight and emphasize the data differently. Summarizing and viewing information in this way means that dashboards are very useful, utilizing these visual components. But what makes them truly engaging and personalized is the ability for the user to interact with the dashboard elements. By allowing users to filter and sort data or set criteria for what is being displayed, the dashboard becomes more useful for each individual. Even though we'll be working almost exclusively in Excel, Dashboards are actually found in different places these days, so we'll round out our dashboard experience by exploring how to share dashboards in places like SharePoint, PowerPoint, and PDF files. So we can explore additional options for utilizing the hard work we've put into developing our dashboard creations. When we actually get down to it, though, there are three main objectives for this series. First is to simply get you excited about what dashboards can provide, and to understand how easily they can be created and applied to a wide variety of data types. Second is to give you a strong foundation for setting up the source data to ensure the dashboard functions easily and effectively. Lastly is the actual construction of the dashboard. You know, it's a lot like when you finished learning to drive. Whether your parents taught you, you took it as a class in school, or even through private instruction. At the end of driver's training, you were comfortable with the automobile. And while you may not have understood every single piece or part and how it works in the car, in general, you knew the workings and how to operate them. With that information, you were able to safely get yourself where you wanted to go, regardless of where that actually may have been. Likewise, when you finish this series, you will be able to take your Excel dashboard skills and apply them to many different potential uses in the business world or even personal ones. Ultimately, that is our goal, to give you the ability to summarize complex data in a visual, easy-to-understand, dynamic, and relevant way for your users.